What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Kansas City Chiefs related video uh, with myself, Josh. And of course, I'm joined by Connor today. You know, it's some big news when I got to bring in Connor for a video. And uh, well, if you guys haven't heard, Frank Clark got arrested for illegal possession of a firearm after a traffic stop. And you know, this is this is perfect timing, an excuse to make another video talking about Frank Clark, because those of you who know me and know my channel know that I've been a massive critic of Frank Clark. And, you know, Clark, you know, Clark, if you're for if somehow Frank Clark is out there listening, watching Fuck you, <laughs> if he's out there listening or watching, uh, why, dude, why? This is the last thing you needed. So. You know, Connor, I'll let you give out your first take on this in a second. But first, I'm just going to read the article from yahoosports.com um, that basically goes over it all. Um, this is by Jason Owens of Yahoo Sports. So, Frank Clark was arrested in Los Angeles Sunday night after police say they found an Uzi firearm in his car. L.A. Police Department spokesman Tony, I'm told uh, reporters on Monday, or Tony Iam is his name, sorry. Uh, I know that kind of sounded weird, but Tony Iams is his name, told reporters on Monday that officers pulled over the Kansas City Chiefs Pro Bowl defensive end for a vehicle code violation as he was driving in his Lamborghini. During the stop, officers say they saw the weapon sticking out of a duffel bag. Clark was charged with the felony possession of a concealed firearm and booked into a Los Angeles County jail facing a $35,000 bond. According to KNBC, Clark has since been released, as were the three passengers in the car. After news of Sunday's arrest broke, the Kansas City Star reported that Clark was arrested in March on another gun charge very recently as well. According to the report, California Highway Patrol po pulled over Clark and another man when their car did not display a front license plate as required by California law. Similar to Sunday's alleged incident that the routine traffic stop led to police finding a loaded handgun and rifle in the car. Clark was also released on $35,000 bond in that incident. According to the report, the chiefs have not commented on the allegations. So Connor, just tell me, take, walk me through uh, your reaction when you heard the news, your thoughts, everything. I was actually mid-argument with the guy who's like, oh, well, Frank Clark is going to have a great season. You know why? Because he has a great mindset, as if that's supposed to really do anything. Uh, and then, like, mid-argument, he just goes, well, forget everything I said after he just got arrested. And I said, wait, what? So then I just look up Frank Clark on Google, hit news, and I just see two articles, like, within six minutes of posting that are just talking about Frank Clark arrested on firearms possession. And I just started laughing hysterically, but like, I mean, I guess since we're assuming that Frank Clark is listening to this, dude, why couldn't you have like beat your girlfriend again? Cause we all know you're cool with doing that and lied to the team about it. So your ass would get cut. Why can't you just do that, dude? Like, why couldn't you just make it so much easier on us? But you know what? A felony is a felony. Hopefully the charges are pretty severe to the point where we can void the rest of this bum's contract and get him off the team. So that's kind of one of my big questions coming out of this. And I didn't really think about it until I watched uh, Carrington Harrison's video that he made uh, with Pete Sweeney today. Um, Carrington Harrison, he's another Chiefs YouTuber. He also uh, is a host at 610. Uh, he has a great channel. Check it out if you haven't already. Anyways, he was talking about how, you know, there might be a possibility that Clark's contract could be voided since there had been contracts in the past that had been voided and stuff for players that, you know, commit a felony. So could that happen here? I don't know, but let me tell you right now, I don't care what you feel about Frank, how you feel about Frank Clark or whatever. If you like the dude, if you don't like him, I don't like him as a player to be honest, but if you do, even you have to admit that he's he's overpaid, right? Like he's not a one hundred million dollar caliber player. He's been pretty disappointing. So, if you were actually to find, if Brett Veach were to find himself in a situation where he can actually just free himself from this contract right now, I think you have to do it. Oh yeah, just you know, good GMs capitalize on situations that they're put in. This is a situation where. Like, 
let's say Patrick Mahomes was caught with an Uzi in his car. We wouldn't be talking about this, you know, but like Clark's contract is shitty. And this is an opportunity to get out of said shitty contract. So take it. It's really bad. Like he has a higher cap hit. He, I, I could be wrong on this. I am pretty sure he has a higher cap hit next year than Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill combined. And if it's not more, it's around the same, like pretty close. That is horrible. That, like that, he's he's barely that impactful. He's about a $4 million player. See, the worst part about this is, you know, if you're hoping for Frank Clark to have a bounce back year per se, um, this is not great at all. Like, you know, you're out here talking to the media, talking about how you didn't hit your goals last year and you're hoping for a 15 sack season and all this, you know, doing that, you know, all that talk that Frank Clark always does. And then you proceed to go out and get arrested right after like, dude, Frank Clark hit, his play on the field was already disappointing. And then he does this. I mean, talk about the absolute worst things you could do after signing a $100 million contract. Clark is not helping himself at all. And, um, you know, if the chiefs can't void his contract after this, uh, I am almost certain that they're going to get out of his contract after the 2021 season, when they can save upwards of $14 million by cutting him. It's funny because everyone, or like the guy I was mentioning earlier, um, you know, I feel like he represents a lot of people because one of the things he said is like, oh, well, Frank Clark is going to have a great season because he has a great mindset and Chris Jones is going to be playing uh, opposite him. Okay, well, how is that going to make Frank Clark better? Well, he's going to be playing next to Jerron Reed and he was good with Jerron Reed in Seattle. Okay, well, if you can't produce next to Chris Jones when he's directly taking blockers off of you, then how are you going to be good when you have Jerron Reed, who is like a mediocre player as opposed to the best defensive tackle in the NFL? How is that going to make you better? And it's not like he was getting double teamed anyway. Like, and even if Frank Clark was this great player, if anything, I'd say playing next to Jerron Reed is going to be worse than Chris Jones. So their logic already doesn't make any sense. Well, as fans, you just have to be hopeful that even though the defensive line is shaken up, it's going to work. Well, as fans, you don't have to be a fucking moron and just assume that everyone's going to be a pro bowler when they obviously don't produce. Oh, well, actually, Frank Clark went to the Pro Bowl. I don't give a shit. He didn't deserve it. So fuck out of here with that. But uh, yeah, uh, and then he followed it up with, like you were talking about earlier. Well, uh, oh, you're probably expecting a 20 sack season, but a more reasonable ex- or expectation would be 10 to 12. He's not getting that. So even if like you lower your expectations, he's still not reaching them. There is no universe where frank clark is a uh, player that's worth his contract in the slightest and if you have to take advantage of him being a dumbass and having an uzi in his car in los angeles to get out of that contract you do it yeah uh kind of adding on to what you said about the whole clark and reed thing I like the Jerron Reed signing. I think he gives us another competent pass rusher in the middle of the defense. Um, however, people keep saying, and I see this everywhere, that having Reed is going to be huge for helping out Clark. And since they had like they both had career seasons next to each other, and while I have acknowledged that before, also what exactly are people seeing on film that would suggest Reed being here will help Clark? Because like you said, it's not like Reed is taking all of these double teams off Clark because Clark was barely getting any double teams anyway. Chris Jones got all the double teams last year. If you actually look at the pass rush win rate by uh, double team rate chart from Seth Walder of ESPN, 
Frank Clark got double teamed less than Tano Passanio in the 2020 season. And if you don't believe me, I can link the chart in the description because Tano Passanio got double teamed more than Frank Clark in 2020. So what, like, what is Jerron Reed supposed to do that is going to actually make Clark better? Like that part I'm struggling to see, like Clark has to get better on his own and actually beat his man one-on-one and be more creative with his pass rush. Um, But yeah, back to the whole Clark being arrested thing. Like, dude, Clark, you're making it really hard for your last handful of defenders out there to stick with you. I mean, this is just not a good look at all. I'm all here for it. I hate anyone who defends Clark. They're all a bunch of morons who don't watch the or don't watch the game. They're all just blind idiots who assume anybody on the poster is a good player, and they like uh, players who are loud. But Frank is loud, but he doesn't back it up. He'd be like if Richard Sherman got burnt by Michael Crabtree. I and the other thing, the other. Uh, concern with this whole thing is look uh, we bag on Clark a lot so I don't think his loss justifiably so yeah so I don't think his loss is a huge loss if this were to happen however you know you don't have too much better behind him but it's um, addition through subtraction if his contract (laughs) gets off the books we're a lot better well I'm not even talking about that what I was going to bring up is Clark since he's facing a felony charge, even if he doesn't get charged or anything, the NFL can still suspend him for this. So let's say he gets suspended for like the first four games of the season. Then our defensive end position is looking really bad. Like we're at the, like I know we showed interest in Melvin Ingram uh, earlier this off season and Justin Houston is still out there, but it never really seemed like the chiefs were going to show interest in any of those guys. Now I think you seriously have to circle back and look for some better in defensive end help with facing the possibility that Clark might not be here for a handful of games. And while I know there's some people out there that think the chiefs have enough at defensive end, um, you know, like they got Kando, the draft pick and taco Charlton's going to have this, you know, big bounce back year after getting hurt last year and showing flashes and second year, Mike Dana and yay, but really they need a, proven pass rush threat on the outside and this only makes relying on chris jones even more of a risk having chris jones play out on the edge so i say admit your loss on the clark contract and go out and sign a competent defensive end like melvin ingram or justin houston who by the way has had identical stats to Clark for the past two seasons and is paid a lot less and also doesn't get arrested for being an idiot. And yeah, I just do make one of those moves, bring in a veteran end, keep Jones on the inside where he's most disruptive and yeah, just leave it at, I'll leave it at that. I don't know how anything you just said is different from before Clark got arrested Oh, it's not like, <laughs> like you're like, oh, well, now that uh, Frank Clark might get suspended. Oh, our pass rush could be an issue. Our pass rush was going to be shit anyway. I don't care. You know, like this doesn't change my concerns at all. The only thing that it does is it means that I won't have to see that uh, fucking obnoxious motherfucker on the field for a couple weeks. Like <laughs> our pass rush is going to be shit either way. So I'd rather watch uh, Dana get bullied by, uh, I don't know, who's the Browns left tackle? Uh, Jedrick Wills. Yeah, I'd rather see uh, Dana get bullied by Jedrick Wills than Clark. Well, I do think our pass rush will be better than last year with, you know, the development of Treshawn Wharton and hopefully Taco can stay on the field. And I like the Jerron Reed signing. It was solid, but... Um, yeah, it, a lot of it's going to have to come from Clark playing better, but Clark can't play better if he's not even going to be on the field, but he's not going to play better anyway. It doesn't matter if he's on the field or not. He's going to make the same impact. Yeah. I'm not banking on it or anything, but, uh, Clark, he's just, 
he's been a disappointment. He really- no, dude. The only thing that changes is we'll probably go a couple of weeks without having to see one of those. Oh, I feel a big game coming for. Clark. I was just about to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you remember every week we saw. Man, I feel like this is a big Frank Clark game where he's going to have two or three sacks, and then just nothing would happen ever. And it's like, really, are we still doing this? And our pass rush was pretty disappointing last year. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not really moving the needle one way or another. I'm not really concerned. I just hope that his contract's off the books. Wouldn't that be something? That That's an A-plus offseason, if you ask me. Look at you, man. Imagine Eric Fisher and Frank Clark both lead the team this offseason. How would you feel? Ward's next, baby. <laughs> Ward, then Clyde, then, or no, it goes... Probably goes Dieter, Ward, Clyde. Um, I'm forgetting somebody. McCall, Pringle, or probably Pringle before McCall. You the get most, rid of those. And the most then I'm hated fan. The most hated fan in Chiefs Kingdom, folks. You're listening to him right now. I like but, everyone else besides those guys, but I hate those guys. So – yeah. Just, oh, and Nick Kaiser. Fuck him. <laughs> One more thing I want to reiterate. Um, it so Clark, I believe, didn't show up to offseason workouts, even though Shocker. Even though he has the He's biggest hut. <laughs> <laughs> Boo fucking who. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, the way you said that was hilarious. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I think Clark had the biggest workout bonus on the team. I think he got like a 500K bonus for coming to workouts. He didn't come to workouts. I don't believe so. He missed what I know they just got finished with what was it? Mandatory something, something. There was something before that, though, either mini camp or whatever. And he didn't show up for that. And then he was at like the last few like mandatory practices they had, but that was it. So you don't show up to a bunch of your offseason and stuff, you miss out on some bonuses. You talk all this, you know, big talk that you're going to hit your goals that you didn't hit last year, even though last year you said you didn't care about the numbers, you only cared about winning, but now you're back to worrying about your numbers. And then you go out and get arrested. Like Clark, dude, just why? It's just so, like, I can't even make fun of him anymore at this point. I can. Well, we know that. And I'll continue to do it until he's off the roster. Well, I I think we pretty much hit everything. I mean, I don't know. How many more Clark videos can I make at this point? Dude, all of our videos have been Clark videos. Every video we've ever made has gone back to us hating Frank Clark in some capacity. Yeah, I'm sure like our last video that we did, I think, what did we do? I, But for example, uh, like if you go back and look at the Orlando Brown video we did, I think we probably mentioned something in there about Orlando Brown owning Clark in practice or something like that. Which he's been doing. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the training camp photos, that sure seems to be the case. But um, yeah, no, I think that's pretty much it. So guys, leave in the comments. What are your thoughts on this whole Frank Clark thing? What do you think is going to happen? How do you feel? Let us know. Uh, this I'm just really disappointed in Frank Clark and have been since he's gotten here, but it's whatever at this point I bagged on Clark enough. Uh, but yeah, all that being said, make sure you like share and subscribe. Some more cheese fans can find this video and make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and caseykingdom.com. That's all I got for today. Peace. <laughs>